guys, it's Chris and welcome to Something Else Apple. Today on the show we have this uh, early 2000s red iMac, is what I'm calling the Gen 2. It has a 450 megahertz power PCG3 running 10.4 Tiger. This unit also has 512 megs of RAM using those SODIMM sticks. There are 256 meg chips in each of the two. So dim slots. Graphics are provided by a ATI Rage 128 Pro with 8 megabytes. Yes, that's right. 8 megabytes of VRAM. Woohoo! That allows you to have up to 1024 by 768 in 32 bit color at 75 hertz. Storage is a whopping 20 gigabyte hard drive from Quantum. It is a Quantum Fireball IDE hard drive. As you can see, it has a uh, two speakers in the front and a slot-loading DVD-ROM like its predecessors before. There are two USB 1.1 ports at up to 11 megabytes per second, Firewire 400, Ethernet, and a 56K modem. Ooh, we also have a microphone and a audio out. There's a reset and a lock up, oh shit button, and a normal power cord in the back. Now I've had this unit for several years now. I'm the owner of an original Blueberry G3 iMac that was 333. Uh, I've since upgraded that with something really special, which I will follow up on in another video. This unit was kindly given to me to be its custodian from my friend Erica. So Erica, I thank you and here's your girl. I have this uh, StarTech.com 44 and 40. I don't know if it's going to be powered. The Berg connector, I don't know. It has a 32 gig compact flash, which is a little bit more than the storage it had. I also have this. I don't know if this is even going to work. Cause it... So, yeah, I'm unsure of that. Um, but these usually work really well for a single device. However, slot loading CD-ROM. Now, as far as wireless connectivity, you have a few options. Old school and new school. Old school options are this Linksys DWL G810. This is a Wi-Fi to Ethernet bridge. You would actually plug an Ethernet cable into here, into the iMac, set this on top. You could go to a local IP address on the Mac, talk to this, set your Wi-Fi. It would repeat and join whatever Wi-Fi, therefore giving you wireless. The more simple solution would be to use like a D-Link or something that Netgear that is Mac compatible. None of these are. Now as far as the audio, way back in the day, Apple gave you this microphone. And it has a very special pinout. It is 3.5 mil. And it looks like this. This is from my Power Mac. Not the iMac. The iMac has one built in, but I just wanted to show you this. Now, they give you a little bit of cable. So just a tiny cable here. Oh, we're not done. Still going. And there you go. Look at this thing. This is the John Holmes of cables. Ah. Yeah, she's a special cable that, of course, Apple being Apple, you have to have their cable in order for it to work. I used to use, like, speakable items way before Siri and, you know freak people out a little bit. Wow! Now this is dirty. We're gonna clean her up. She's got some fingerprints on her. Now as usual there's way too much stuff on my desk. Warm up that old tube. You'll hear this hard drive clinking along and for the camera you are going to see some Hertz flickering because this is set for 60 Hertz, this camera, and this machine is in 75. I will reduce it to 60 Hertz and we'll see if it stops the flicker in here. Now to the naked eye I can't see that, but it will give you a headache after a few hours. Very simple setup. It's auto logged on as a user. And of course, the clock is set to before 2001. 450 megahertz, PowerPC G3, 512 mega RAM. Rotational hard drives are so, so, so slow. You can still see the heavy aqua influence of Tiger. Three choices 640 by 480 at 117. 800 by 600 at 95. Does that look a little better? A little bit better. It's horrid. And 10, let's see how 640 by 480 looks. 
So that's a little bit better. You can see one big bloom of color. So Apple System Profiler, like I said earlier, it's a 20 or 19.08 gig fireball, quantum fireball. Wow, that is crazy. I have 8 gigs free. It has a Meshita DVD-ROM. Not a DVD-RW, just a reader. She's a slot loader. ATY Rage Pro 128. I think that is a typo. 256 and 256 for a total of 512. We're rocking the PC 133. For network, we have Ethernet, Firewire Ethernet, the internal 56K modem, and a VPN that's currently set up on this machine. There's no airport card slot, hence my Ethernet to Wi-Fi bridge. And that's about it. Now, this girl's seen some better days. It is a translucent red. Some people call this strawberry. This is the second gen. How do you get these apart? You lift it up on her face. And we'll put a mouse pad down so I don't scratch it. The early IMAX had a screw up here and you would yank the handle and pull it off. So this has a little coin lock thing right here. You're going to see this little dude. Ooh, you stick something in there, mainly like a quarter. That's where you're going to access your memory. And so I took these two screws out. If I'm not mistaken, doesn't this one have the external VGA port behind that cover? Let's find out. Let's see, I think it's a depression. Yep. And sure enough, there you go. I have to take those screws out anyway. There's an external VGA port for a secondary monitor. Totally different change from the original one. All right, so it screws out. We're going to give her a, well, that was easy, a tug. Normally there's two tabs there. They're dirty. They're right here. They're intact. Didn't lose anything. You can see the original door right here where you unlock it and it opens up. Now we have this nice shielding we have to take out just to get to our internals. I can see the hard drive right here. Boy, cobwebs galore here. I'm going to pop this off ever carefully. Fishing it around the Dude, and here is your shielding. And as you can see, I already took the battery out and totally forgot I did it. It's a good lesson on what you need to do. I do want to get the hard drive out of here ever so carefully. Give the tune up. It's brand new now. There's a 50 pin ribbon on the motherboard that is 40 pins cut out of this cable for the hard drive. We're going to remove the four screws that are holding in this hard drive. Gives you a little pull tab that fell off years ago. So we'll grab the actual drive and pull her straight up. Yep. Quantum Fireball. 20 gigabyte. Last person to put this in there was a dude that built this machine. So I'm going to use a Berg splitter. That's just going to take this and give me the micro power. Yeah, I got two of them. It's okay. It plugs right in. And then 40 pin, straight on in, except it's backwards, so it'll sit like this. And there you go. Now I can get a holder, and I'm going to have to do something because it is, you know, exposed, I'll say. This should be recapped, but I'm extremely lazy and don't feel like doing it. Now, because this unit's exposed, I could have two choices. I could spend an excessive amount of hours 3D printing a bracket for this. Or I can use sticky foam, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut myself out a perfectly measured piece. That way, I can protect the pins from grounding out. There you go. Due to my perfect measurements, uh, everything is fine. It won't touch. If it does, it's going to be funny. I'm just going to shove all this down there because this card does not take up that much space. And as we get close, we'll plug her in and give her the final shove. It will hold itself. I'm going to double up the tape in that little area. Don't be like me. Spend the time and 3D print yourself something. But there we go. So that is an empty hard drive thing. And you know what? We're going to give this a full cleaning. <sighs> Perfect. We're going to put it back on. This is like excessive overkill. Now I'm going to leave the cover off for a little bit. Like most Mac users, they stuck the sticker on it. 
Okay, that looks 375.8, maybe 0.9 times better. Tiger. Speak. You know. We'll back up. Copy. All right. Question mark. Perfect. Let's boot off Tiger. This unit is $1,299 and it weighs 34.7 pounds or 15.7 metric. This is slow. Let's do disk utility and see what we get. So we have a 30 gig... Ooh, sorry. So now you can see here, between the flickers, I apologize for that. I don't know how to get it to not do that. CRT land. Um, you can see here, 28 gigs. So we're going to partition that. And now I can install okay. to that. Well, successfully installed. No moving parts anymore, except the fan. Starting OS 10. Now it's going to need updates and stuff. And wow, that was so much faster than before. Oh, and look, we have updates. That's funny. For Java 131 and 142 release 2, the Mac OS 10 update combined for 10, 4, 11, and the Mac DVD player. It'll take about a minute. Now, while that's doing, I want to check out this monitor thing. On the external, I have to move the Mac forward. Uh, at least it's clear and not flickery. Let's see if we can extend the display, or is it just an external display? It is only external. It doesn't, it doesn't give us multiple displays. So it's just a pass-through. On a plus note, when this CRT, if this CRT burns out, you can just plug her into the back, you know? So much more clear. There. Hard drive space available is 27.21 gigs. The CRT, although flicking, is really nice looking. It's crisp and bright. Yeah, you're seeing some flicker, but my eyeballs... It's a nice crisp display. It looks really well. There's no scratches on the glass. No noise at all. It's completely silent. There's no fan like the old iMac had a fan underneath. This is all thermal vented through convection. Massive heat sink inside the tube and on the power supply. Bingo. I'm going to let iTunes update and uh, get back to it. So that has been the Compact Flash solid state update for this iMac DV Plus from the year 2000. She's in ruby red and now she doesn't make a noise. Thank you guys for coming along on this Macintosh journey. Until next time, thanks for watching and I hope you learned something. Funny, you bastard.